we're going to be changing the oil today. So we need this highly unusual specialized tool that the uh, Toyota dealership said they had. I drove down there. They didn't. I had to order it on Amazon and wait eight weeks for them to deliver it. We also need this strange, unusual size 27 millimeter socket tool that goes on the outside of this one, like this. This is to remove the oil filter housing, which is a horrendous pain and leaks and spills all over the place. And they wanna charge you $100 to change your oil, which is ridiculous. And this is the uh, synthetic 0W20 high efficiency, low viscosity oil. That's my oil drain pan. We're gonna put a bunch of newspaper down. I got this from my mom. She subscribes to newspaper, she's 74. That's my oil catch can over there. We're gonna use that to collect the old used motor oil and take it to an auto parts store. Well, let's get this party started. To start with, we're going to take this big jack right here and jack up the car. Here's a torque wrench an additional extension and a screwdriver and a crescent wrench. We're going to add that to the collection. The drain bolt. I've only loosened it. We're going to let it drain slowly here. And then uh, I'll capture that drain bolt with a uh, paper towel like this. And then uh, the oil filter housing is right next to it. And um, that's that thing up there, right, right over here. And there goes the bolt, and so the oil, we're gonna have to fish it out of the tank now. The oil is coming out in a strange pattern now, but alas, we'll get all of it. You also need uh, one of these. This is an element kit. Uh, this is the explanation. It tells you you need a special tool to remove this uh, jankity plastic housing. I've jacked the car up on the other side, now having found where oil door is, letting all the funky oil escape. Here I've captured the drain bolt and cleaned it with my paper towel. Get in here and put this bolt back in the drain hole. Then we're gonna use the torque wrench to tighten it. Okay, so it's 27 foot-pounds. Is twist this until we get to 27 foot-pounds. There's 20 and seven, so it's 27 foot-pounds. This is the uh, 14 millimeter socket we're gonna use to tighten the drain bolt. First, we're gonna pull the socket off and tighten it hand tight, and then we're gonna torque it down until the torque wrench clicks. Make sure it's nice and snug. Dirty motor oil is a carcinogen, so you don't wanna get on your skin. Wear nitrile gloves, it smells weird. That weird smell is actually volatiles from the combustion that leak past the piston rings, especially when the engine is old and end up depositing brown and black crap in your engine oil. This is why changing engine oil is so important. It keeps the bearings and everything, all the friction surfaces in the engine nice and clean and lubricated. Drain the old motor oil into this gas can here. It seems like a lot more than four quarts. I better double check the capacity. Oil recycling is eco-friendly. That's why we're saving this. You can take it to your local auto parts store. They have a big jug in the back where you can save up your motor oil in an old can like this and take the can down to the auto parts store and recycle your motor oil. That's the oil filler. Right. Unscrew that. Prius's are kind of weird. The oil filler is way up near the dashboard, so I have a special funnel. We'll just... This is the 3D printed funnel right here. Um, I'm not sure who the design was from, but thank you. I printed that on an old uh, printer I had to get rid of. It malfunctioned after 25 days. We're going to set this up here like this. It allows you to fill the oil without interfering with the uh, upper cowlings. Add 300 more for a total of 4,300 milliliters or 4.3 liters. It holds 4.4, but since I didn't get the filter, houser at, filter housing out on filter, we're going to assume that it contains about 100 mils of oil. Now we got to check the dipstick. We're going to take out the engine oil dipstick like this. We're going to examine it. We're going to wipe it off. Okay, you see those two dots? That's the overly full and too low point on the dipstick filler. We're going to put that back and then we're going to carefully insert that and then we're going to remove it again and this time we're going to look at that 
and make sure we've got enough oil and indeed we do okay guys this is what you're looking at here this is the oil filter in the plastic oil filter housing and the special adapter tool that's required that's a 3 8 connection on there when this thing is installed in the engine it is so hard to remove I had to resort to using that that's an impact wrench yeah I had to set up my air compressor then to make matters worse as soon as you unscrew this thing from the housing let me show you the housing is mounted sideways right there and as soon as you start unscrewing it oil starts pouring out like six seven eight ounces of oil still dripping off so make sure to put an oil pan under there instead of using a normal canister cartridge Toyota has chosen to use this cartridge here this is the cartridge now when you open this cartridge you'll notice they include an o-ring this o-ring has to be installed on the housing down here you have to change the o-ring every time using a pick tool and careful not to mar the plastic because it's a plastic housing I actually bought a new one just in case I damaged this one there's the old one there's the new one so you can you can tell that one's dirty this one's clean and on the upside it is eco-friendly because this is the only part you have to change there's no metal canister it's just this one props to Toyota for reducing waste but man this is like 10 times harder and much messier than the canister style oil filter that they used on the previous gen this is for the third gen Toyota Prius I know they've been doing it on other vehicles like the Toyota Tacoma and the Tundra. This is a Volkswagen maneuver. Volkswagen does this same crap. I just wanted to call out the manufacturer for making the one service that you're required to do regularly super challenging. Also to note, there's a retainer clip. This hole, that's for that retainer clip. So after you screw the housing in, that plastic housing, you need to put that clip back. That's to keep it from coming undone. When you extract the old filter, you just wiggle it out. You're gonna pull it out like that. Set it in a funnel like this on t at an angle on top of an oil recycling container. And that'll allow gravity to extract all of the motor oil that might be remaining to, to drip out of the filter. It takes a while. So that's what it's supposed to look like now. You're gonna snug that down. 17 foot-pounds is the specification and make sure to reinstall the safety clip. You'll feel it when the O-ring starts squeaking just put a little thin film of oil on there. That'll help it slide in. I used a small torque wrench, but yeah, you no more than 17 foot-pounds per the manual. It was obviously on there, tightened on with some kind of tool, and took an extraordinary amount of impact wrench hammering to get it back off. But the, incredibly, the plastic housing did not break, so two thumbs up to Toyota for making it out of some kind of really tough plastic. Thanks again for watching. Cheers, guys.